I hope you are still doing well. Uh, this is our final lesson in this topic of formula and variation. Uh, previously, we were looking at joint variation, and I hope you did the assignment that I gave you. Today, we look at the last type of variation, and that is partial variation. When you hear the word partial, you think about parts. And in mathematics, when you think about parts and you connect them to variation, it means you take one portion and then you add it to another. So in partial variation, there is one sign which is very important, and that is the addition sign. So when you think about partial variation, there must be an addition sign. Uh, unlike in other types of variation, that is direct, inverse, and joint, where we had multiplication sign, here we will have both multiplication between a constant and a variable, and then we will have addition between one part and the other. And again, when you think about partial variation, there's one general equation that comes to your mind, and this is the equation of a straight line, the general equation of a straight line which is y is equals to mx plus c. And you know that there are two constants here. m is a constant, which is the gradient of the line, and c is also a constant, which is the y-intercept. So if I was to put a statement in this equation from variation, how would it be? It will be y is partly constant partly constant. This part, it is just constant. It does not have a variable. It's just a long, just a constant. And partly varies as x. I told you when we were looking at joint variation, if the word inverse is not there, but we just use the word varies, it means direct variation. So this is direct variation. So y will partly vary directly as x. And it will be partly constant. So there are two parts. One of them is constant. The other one is a direct variation with x. So we take this part, which is a constant, and this partial variation, which we have, must also multiply to the constant, and then we add the two portions. And we are talking about y. Is that not the same equation? y is equal to c plus mx. That's the same as y is equal to mx plus c. The most important part here is that you take one part, uh, you, you, you draw it with it, and then you take the other one, and you then add both parts. Let's take another example. You will need a lot of practice here for you to know how to form these uh, kind of equations. I'll give you three examples, and in the last example, we will uh, go further to see how you can be able to get uh, the constants. Something to note here, even as we go to the next example, is that in partial variation, there must be two um, constants. There must be two constants. And in this case, uh, I am using M and C. You can use any, any other uh, type or any other letter. Now, let's take one example here. P varies partly as x and partly as the square root of x. P varies partly as x and partly as the square root. x. You might think we have only two variables here, that is p and x, but we have p varying with x, direct variation because the word inverse is not there. So we have, uh, let's say kx for direct variation. So p varies with x for direct variation. And partly as the square of x. Again, another direct variation because the word inverse is not there. 
So another constant, you don't use the same constant. So you use a different letter. C square root of x. This is one part. P varies directly as x. It also varies directly as square root of x. Different parts, you add them together. And there's an equal sign already because you have put your constants of proportionality. So here P varies as x and partly as the square root of x. That is the equation. So given more information on this, you can be able to get K and C. And we will be seeing this uh, as we continue. Another example here for us to write the equation is Y varies partly as M and partly inversely as X. Two parts here. One, Y varies partly as M. Direct variation. The word inverse is not there. So direct variation. So Y varies partly as M. So we have Y. Then we have to put a constant. K times M. Constant times the variable. That's one for direct variation. And partly inversely as X. The word inversely means that this X must go to the denominator. So the constant, we use another letter, we can use C, is in the numerator and the variable is in the denominator. If you want to know why, you can refer to my lesson on inverse variation to see why this x goes to the denominator. And then these are two portions, two different parts we add. So y varies partly as m and partly inversely as x. So we have both parts and we have added the two parts together. Maybe you can write this one and then you try and write the equation. The speed of a particle S varies partly as Sorry, the speed of a particle S is partly constant and partly varies as time t. Partly constant and partly varies as time t. So you can pause the video at your, uh, at your pace and maybe work it out. Uh, in this case, S, which is the speed, is partly constant. A C, a constant without any variable. Then, it also varies partly as a time T. You cannot just put T without putting another constant. Because in partial variation, there must be two constants. So it is partly constant. This is a constant without any variable. And then partly varies as t. Direct variation because there is no word inverse. And we put the equal to sign here. This is our equation from that statement. Try many others and see how you will be able to perform that. I give you my last example whereby we want to work now. Throughout until we get our two constants. Uh, P is partly constant. And partly varies inversely. It's Q. If Q is nine, it is three. And if Q is eighteen, P is nine. Find P when Q is 12. 
Remember I told you in other questions, even if you are told to find P when Q is 12, first of all, you must find the equation connecting P and Q. So, the moment you see the word partly, then partial variation comes in. So, P is partly constant. So, there is a constant without a variable, C. Just like in this case of the previous example. And it partly varies inversely as Q. That tells you that Q goes to the denominator automatically. But you have to introduce another constant, K plus you add both parts. So that is our equation. So our work will be to look for C and Q using the two uh, sets of P and Q that we have been given. So you are told P is 3, uh, C plus K over 9. And the other one, Q, P is 9, C plus K over 18. So there you are, you have two equations, equation one and equation two. I would like you to solve those two equations simultaneously. The way you know, you, you know how to solve uh, simultaneous equations. This one is from your knowledge on linear equations uh, earlier on in your, in your syllabus. So solve those two simultaneous equations. The way you know, find K and find C. Uh, you can confirm k you will find as 108 by solving the two simultaneously and c will be 3. So our equation will be p is equals to 3 plus 108 over q. This is a must. You have to write it. Then find p when q is 12. So P is equals to 3 plus 108 over 12. So when you divide 108 by 12, I think you get 9. So 3 plus 9, and our answer will be uh, 12 also. So there you are. When you are given more information, it means you will get two equations. Whether there was a constant, another variable here or not, huh? it doesn't matter you will get two simultaneous equations. You solve them simultaneously. You can solve using elimination. You can solve using whichever way. You can solve using substitution, any other method that you want to use. And then you get the two constants. After you get the two constants, substitute them in this original equation. Such that from there now, you will be able to substitute the variable you have been given to get what you have been asked. So here, there you are you go ahead like that. I will give you an assignment on the same and uh, that brings us to the end of this topic. I hope uh, everything has been clear and in case there will be any question, you can inbox it to me or you can raise it with a class for further discussion. Thank you very much. God bless you.